Hey everybody, how are we doing? It's late February and we've got quite a lot of new eggs already. Uh, they normally only start laying about this time of year really, but we've had quite an early start from a few of the newts this year. I've already got quite a lot of eggs, so today I'm going to be setting up some uh, some tubs for hatching the eggs and rearing the larvae in. So I've got a couple of tubs ready. Um, I'm going to be using these ones which are 80 litres. Um, the only cheap tubs, I think they're from B&M's, these ones, uh, for £9 to there. Uh, so I'm going to go outside and I'm going to get these set up all ready to get some eggs in there and I'll show you how I do that. Go on. Go on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wash the tubs out. They are brand new tubs, they've not been used before but um, just in case there's any kind of residues or anything in there from the, the factory or the shop or, or whatever, just to be safe. Um, we can use tap water for this, this is fine, so I'm just going to use a hose to wash them out. So the next thing is to decide where we're going to place the tubs. I've chose this location um, because it's going to be nice and sunny, it's a south facing wall. Um, so. It's probably the sunniest spot in the garden, and uh, sit. That's going to uh, that's going to keep the warm, keep the water nice and warm for the newts, uh, for the newt larvae as they start to develop. Um, so yeah, nice sunny spot is ideal for these guys. So the next thing is to fill the tubs up with water. So what kind of water are we going to use? Well, I like to use about fifty percent water from the adult tanks. The same tanks that the eggs have been laid in and use around about 50% rainwater from a barrel that I collect from the gutter. Um, so I use collected rainwater for doing the water changes on the adult tanks as well whenever I'm changing water. So it's basically rainwater what I'm using um, but I do like to use some of the mature water from the tank that the eggs have been laid in as well. So I've got a bucket full of water from the adult tank. I'm going to use a bucket full of rainwater too. There's around about 10 litres uh, in a bucket, in these buckets. So although, like I say, they're 80 litre tubs, um, we've basically got 20 litres of water in there at the moment. So I don't know, about five inches high maybe, something like that. Um, that's fine for now. We don't need to fill it right up. So the only other thing that we need in these boxes before we put the new eggs in there is some plants. Now, if the adults are laying their eggs on the plants, you may well be taking the plants from the adult tanks and putting them into the tubs with the eggs attached. But if you're using plastic for the newts to lay their eggs on, like I showed on one of my previous videos, uh, as I do, then you can leave the plants in the adults' tanks if you like um, and move the eggs on the plastic to the tubs and then you might want to use some different plants for your tubs. So where do you get them from? Where do you get those plants from? One thing that you don't want to do, uh, under no circumstances, take eggs from a different tank with a different kind of newt in and put those in because that's one of the easiest ways to get um, eggs accidentally transferred from one tub to another and get them mixed up. Also at this time of year, like I say it's late February now, it's still a little bit early for wild newts to be laying their eggs but I wouldn't recommend taking plants from the wild this time of year because there's always a chance of wild newts laying some early eggs as well and you could transfer wild newts uh, from wild newts eggs from the ponds to your boxes as well and get those mixed up with your um, captive bred newts. So I've got a barrel here which I use just for growing uh, plants in. So there's some load here, we chuck that in. Um, some hornworts. A bit more there, there's a little bit of duckweed in there as well. Uh, some people hate duckweed, I don't mind it to be honest, it doesn't do any harm. As long as there's not too much of it blocking, blocking the sun out. So there we go, there's a the last bit of plant there and I think we're done. So that is everything that we need in the box. Well, hang on. What was that? That's everything we need. What about the filter? What about the aeration? What about light? 
Yeah. Not using anything like that. No electrics. Nothing at all. Don't need it. Um, I positioned the boxes outside. I'm going to leave the lids off. So they're going to get some rain. It's going to keep the water fresh. I obviously have got the, the sunlight. That's the best light you can get. So they're actually getting UV light. Um, that's it. What more do we need? What more do we need? Oh, hang on, hang on. There's one more thing we need. We need some food. So, I'm going to have a little dip in my pond, in my garden, and there you go. Oh. Daphne, you see it there? There's a few scuds in there as well. I can chuck them in, they won't do any harm. There we go. So that is all we need. So these are the eggs that we're going to be taking out. These are great crested newt eggs, Treasurus cristatus. Um, I don't take them out every day. I wait until there's quite a lot on the plastic like this and it starts to get kind of all scrunched up with loads of eggs on it like that. And there's not much room left for them to lay more. Then I'll take it out. So they've been laying on this for a couple of weeks now. That's ready to come out. Put that in a little tub. I'll put it a little bit of water from the adults tank in there. And then I can take that outside to float in the box that I've just set up for them. So we can float that in there. We can leave it for 20 minutes or so, so the temperatures get the same and then release the eggs into the box. We'll add some more food probably when the newts start hatching, when there's a few larvae in there. Um, but that's it, that's that's all we need for now. We're all set up and ready. So that's it guys. Like I always say, it really is that easy keeping and breeding crested newts. So why not have a go yourself? If you want to learn more, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos. I'm going to be following the progress of these eggs and larvae as they develop and grow. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe and uh, thank you for watching. One, two, three, four.